So welcome back, dear viewers. This is the second part of my GH4 uh, story. No, the first one was mostly a presentation. It was, it was a bit more exhaustive, a bit more poetic, a bit more, um, a bit more of an editorial piece. So, um, my personal view on the Lumix camera. I'm not trying to milk too many uh, views out of these, so I'm not splitting them in order to um, keep you waiting. But I felt that that was way too much uh, um, detail in the first uh, clip. So here it is, uh, an actual view of the GH4. This is the Micro Four Thirds bayonet. Um, there's a few scratches here because I'm mostly I'm in a bit of a hurry. I don't have patience to align the lens perfectly, but they're just aesthetic small imperfections. They don't affect the the work of the GH4. As you can see, the bayonet still firmly holds the lens into place. So yeah, this is the sensor, the 16 megapixel sensor. It's quite small compared to full frame sensors. Well. That Captain Obvious over here, but still it does a fine job. I do admit there's a bit of a low light uh, deficiency with these cameras, so I don't recommend them for photos, but for filming projects, they're simply the best money can buy, at least in my opinion. Yeah, sure, the Bluemix contrast fo based focus system is a bit of a letdown, but there are ways around it. This is the tilting um, articulated screen. It's a three inch unit. It's quite enough in terms of details. Let me take the lens cap off. When filming, I place the camera in cinema mode. I just adjust the white set. I um, I adjust the frame rate and the f, uh, the aperture, the f-stop, and I, well, I basically look at the zebra lines, which show you if it the um, there's uh, oversaturation of light. So yeah, this is a very handy feature. You can find explanations on it on the net on more professional reviews. I'm sorry, I'm not able to do that better for you but I'm just having I'm, I'm just showing you a look of this camera here you can select the way the focusing works so I usually place it in auto focus with manual focus override something like that so you can see the beautiful you can see the autofocus trying to work, but also the beautiful way you can focus manually and keep that focus um, line as well. And you can select this um, this square where the focus, where you want the focus to be. So let's just darken up the scene a bit, select the white set and try to take a look of a, try to have a, take a picture of something yeah, you can see the zebra lines there now you have to get rid of those the, the lighting doesn't allow us right now and also let's try to focus let's try the manual focus now I'll show you a photo Okay. So you can see, well, it's just an example. It's not perfect, but you can see the beautiful details where the selective focus and the rest of the bokeh effect. So yeah, in theory, you can do great stuff in terms of photos with this camera. I'm not bothering to because I don't really have the patience to take too much too many photos um, but let's get back to the camera I'll put it in cinema mode if you select this button you can um, you can view the uh, recording history what you have filmed what you have um, 
taken photos of. Uh, this is another button for recording film. This is the SD card slot. It's only one as you can see, so there, there's no um, redundant uh, second SD slot, which is a rather shame because I would have liked to have two slots. Now these are the key points because here this is the recording um, the recording slot. So the recording jack, you connect your microphone, you adapt it to the hot shoe here physically and you run a cable here to record audio. And also this is the most valuable asset of the GH4, at least in my opinion in, and in my experience. This is another jack for the headphones so you can listen to your recordings live as you film and I have found this to be very, very um, helpful in training and adjusting your voice. Also, here is the micro USB and micro HDMI cable um, outlet, which I haven't really used, the micro HDMI, I mean. I will show you the bottom of them. Well, again, some other settings here, which I, uh, well, I'm ashamed to say that I have not tinkered with. I've forgotten what they do. Um, the flash, uh, where is the release for the flash? Here it is. It should be here anyway. I need to turn it on to operate it. Yeah, so here is the flash. The next model in the lineup, the GH5, does not have a built-in flash. I don't know if it's useful or not because it seems a bit, well, a bit average, a bit low grade, same as the inboard stereo microphone, which does not handle sounds as well as you might expect. Uh, actually, the, the GoPro that I am filming with right now doesn't have an additional microphone adapted for it. So that goes to show that the GH4 mic setup is just average. So let me just turn the camera off. Another feature which might be useful or cumbersome depending on your look is there's a, there's a sensor panel here which uh, senses when your face gets close to the view the view piece, the the viewfinder, and shuts off the uh, touch screen and um, this well the tilting screen. I can disable it quite easily. So yeah, I leave it on because sometimes I take photos uh, of the things that I'm filming to get a more uh, cinematic profile look for YouTube, um, a thumbnail. But I I usually enable it or disable it as the case requires. So let me just turn the camera off and show you the battery, which is, in my opinion, quite small compared to, let's say, modern smartphones or other uh, gadgets from today. I don't know if you can see this because the GoPro might not film correctly, but it's a 1860 milliamp, uh, so 1.8 amp, power battery pack which might not sound so much but keep in mind i have managed to record about two or up to three hours of video in 4k mode with this beast without any issue and not have depleted the battery completely so i still had about 20 to 30 percent of battery power left after filming in 4k cinema mode with the max settings which is something extraordinary i'm pretty sh confident i'm pretty sure i'm pretty confident that you cannot do that with a g7 or a gx80 or another lower grade lumix camera um by the way this one also doesn't simply have 4k mode but 4k cinema mode and i'm just going to show you right now by the way the the 
the menu is simply extraordinarily easy to use even though you wouldn't say this because this is just an LCD panel from way back 2014 but it actually is intuitive and I can easily even operate it left-handed in a mirror mode with my other hand which is quite quite extraordinary uh, well seeing as how I'm holding it right now but anyway let's get back to the recording as uh, you can see here the quality the recording quality is actually 4096 by 2160 pixels and it's above the usual it's a wider angle and it's a more it's a more complete 4k resolution if that makes any sense it's higher than what the gopro can do and i think that what mother modern smartphones can do well at least those that i have looked into so yeah there's that um let's get back to the lens this one as i've explained is the 25 millimeter kit lens it has a removable hood and this one can be reversed so it doesn't occupy too much space in terms of constructions it is a plastic matte plastic painted unit so it's not metallic the bayonet is metallic but not much else by the bayonet i mean the mounting uh, surface we call it bayonets in Romanian, sorry about that. So if I'm not using this term correctly, I apologize. Um, it's not a premium lens, but it offers excellent capabilities in the right hands for the price that it's sold at. It's about 150 euros discounted new from shops or second hand you could get it almost i think 120 a good example a pristine one so it's a great buy it does offers it does have several drawbacks like the focusing capabilities the autofocus capability is is not helping the gh4 at all uh, but for what it is uh, it's a great value lens so let me just put it over here and get my second lens which I am currently using. This one is quite important. It's the 12 to 60 millimeter Lumix lens. It's also it also has this sunshade hood protection. Uh, it also can be reversed here into position. Let me just position it correctly there we go so this lens is a kit zoom lens it does not offer the same performance in terms of f-stop so this one is an f 1.7 excellent for bokeh effects and blurry backgrounds this one not so much but from what what I have found from my experience when filming faraway objects or well let's say five to ten meters this one is better at focusing or auto focusing in video mode compared to the 25 millimeter um, lens um, quite uh, strange actually since this one is better at filming close-up stuff the way I'm filming this current series but there you have it so this one I got it as I've said previously in my video I got it for about 180 euros uh, second hand but it only had about 300 shots to it so it was in excellent condition it's a manual lens it's still built from plastic it has some metal on the base of it but it's not a it's a well-built device a well-built gadget an excellent built lens but it's not a premium one nor it should be at this price range i know i was pretty shocked as well when first getting into the micro four thirds um, um universe array of cameras and lens but as it turns out 
photo as well as any other hobby or um, artistic endeavor is quite expensive to fuel <laughs> with uh, with uh, your needs so yeah um, these are expensive toys this is one of the reasons why I haven't uh, persisted in buying anything else as I've previously stated in the other episode I have my eyes on a Leica or a Panasonic Leica 12 to 60 millimeter f2.8 to f4 lens which would offer me the bokeh effect close closer to this 25 mil and uh, while well, the narrow or uh, large depth of field as I require uh, from the 12 to 60 by the way I'm not interested in taking sh nature shots or far away shots or spotting birds or whatever as I've stated before photography isn't really my thing I just mainly do videos so this is my camera this is the reasoning for my using it this is basically the way I use it every day I will follow up with um, some reviews on my on the microphones I use uh, my GoPro uh, and well an attempt at stabilizing video which this that one is a failed attempt so stay tuned I still have three or four more episodes on speaking about the the gadgets that I bought to start up this YouTube endeavor so thank you for watching uh, I'm looking forward to your comments hope you have a uh, have had have had some fun with this uh, review and well I guess I'll see you in the next one also I'll just quickly talk about this lens as you might have seen it this is actually a Juico Olympus Micro Four Thirds lens but it's a defective one it's a pancake model so if you want to know what pancake uh, lens are this is one of those it offers electronic zo controlled zoom so it uh, extends uh, via motors uh, it's a 12 to 32 it's a 14 to 42 millimeter lens in micro four thirds speak I don't know what that translates to full frame or Canon uh, cameras or lens so I just mainly speak in micro four thirds and it does offer this rather interesting cap which retracts and shuts off automatically but alas it's defective so I can't really use it I just got it for fun as a prop I thought to myself maybe I'll have the I'll try to clean it and have the courage to use it but yeah I might be giving this away for free if somebody is interested in getting it I don't know we'll see if I have it in six months or so I'll just I'll just donate it to somebody who wants to try their hand at repairing it I think it has potential or at least it has some uh, some educational potential because someone might open open it up and try to learn from it or whatever so yeah that has been my review Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.